Hey, this is Max Cougar, and this is the fifth QC tutorial in the Quake C series. And I do have the tutorials a little more organized now. I do have a lesson plan, and so I think the video should get a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to read. So let's just start out today. All right. So open up your QC, QC program, and we are going to be working in client.qc first. So open that up. Now scroll down to about right here. Put client and server called each time a player is spawned right here. All right. So we're kind of kind of going to go over this. Basically what this function does is this is the function that is called when a player respawns or he's put in the game. So all these variables are set. Okay, so let's break it down. Okay, first of all, these right here, these two functions, these are called after put client and server. They're called after that. So since the compi or code compiles from bottom to, or top to bottom, this code right here isn't gonna know what this is because this is later on. So this code right here it can't be used unless you call this. This is basically saying, okay code, you're gonna find this later on. We're gonna use it and then you're gonna find it well, you're gonna find it later on. Same with this. Player die is a function that is called after this function. So since cut code compiles top to bottom, this function is gonna get called before this one and it's not gonna know what it is. So this is basically saying we're going to use this function, so just put off and let the user use it, and then we'll find it. So you can pretty much do that with anything, just remember that. Okay, so let's start out. Local entity spot, you're spawning um, you know, a new entity, you're using a new entity, and you're applying the entity spot to select spawn point, which this returns an entity. Just remember that. So that's basically finding your sp your spawn point. Then remember the class name, it sets a name so other functions can use that name, you know, refer to it. So with this name, other things and functions can refer to the player by using that. This is setting your health to 100. You could set it to like 1,000, a million, 100 billion, or whatever you wanted to. But that's how much health you got set. This is what kind of damage you can take. If you put um, it damaged no, then you're gonna be able. You're not gonna be able to be hurt at all. You're gonna be invincible. So if you want to um, make some sort of function that makes you invincible, you just set the damage from damage aim to damage no. Like I said in a lot of the other tutorials, you want to find out where all the damages are, or any of the values. You can find them right here. The take damage values are right here. Got damage no, damage yes, damage aim. Alright, self.solid equals solid slide box. That's a certain type of solid. Remember we went over the solids. Self.move type equals move type walk. That's for the player. It's specifically for the player. <coughs> this is this is making it so um, monsters don't know where you are right when you spawn. Remember how in the fire function we set this to a time? Time plus time plus one that's setting it back to zero because it has to set all these variables just to their original values or else if you go on to another level then some of these variables might, might not be set they might still be set in motion okay this is this is saying that basically um, this entity it's a client in the game so you can add flags you can find the flags in devs.qc I'm not going to keep going there though Self dot air finished equals time plus twelve. That has to do with being underwater. This is setting how much underwater time you can have. You know when you go underwater, you can be underwater for twelve seconds. That's setting that value. Self dot damage equals two. That's how much damage water does to you. And you can trace this all back to the original functions and where this is all changed and stuff. But that's how much um damage water does to you you know when you're drowning 
all these right here these are all for um abilities you know items these are all being set to zero so you're you're not using them self dot effects equals zero let's just say the player got a light effect put on him this would take the light effect away so he doesn't have it still and invincible that's that's again with the items okay whoops decode level parms that was a function we discussed earlier or wasn't we didn't really discuss it but I kind of told you what it's all about you know you need you need to put in items and stuff whatever you want to keep from level to level or saving W set current ammo that's setting you know it's finding your weapon and it's setting the ammo that goes with that specific weapon and it's setting the first person um, the first person weapon you know the model of it all right these right here or this right here self dot attack finished you know the attack finished right like when you shoot your gun you put some attack finish time on there so this is just you know setting it back to normal and this is what kind of pain you have and what kind of um, how you die so this is a pretty cool little little things right here this right here is always checking it's all and if you do get pain it's gonna call this function every time you get you take pain and if you die it's gonna call this function and you can do that for any entity these right here can be applied to any entity so if you make a new entity and you want to give them some sort of die some sort of function when they die you can just apply it like that self dot dead flag equals no that's a dead flag if that dead flag is yes then that means you're dead so obviously you don't want to be dead pause time for the teleporters um, this is just setting up you know how you're looking because in worldcraft the map editor you can set you know your angles and stuff so this is gonna set it to spawn points angles okay remember this is right here is an origin or it's a vector it's requiring a vector this is requiring a vector this is requiring a float okay then this is where you, this is kind of a hack right here this is setting you know eyes it's setting a model for eyes so you can have a camera but you can't see the eyes though that's why it's a hack it's, that's why I see it as anyway okay it's just setting your model for the player it's setting how big the model is you know how big it is that invisible box for world collision okay this is how tall your eyes are right here y if you change this to like what 50 or something then you're gonna be really tall okay player stand one this is the animation frame you're gonna spawn in and you can put yourself as in player run or whatever you want to but you obviously want to be standing you don't want to be running when you spawn okay this is just a special this is checking if um it's deathmatch or co-op the game variants so if it's either deathmatch or co-op this right here these two little lines this means or so it's saying if deathmatch or co-op then you're going to make vectors at self dot angles and you're going to spawn t fog which i've I don't use that function so I don't know what it does and I don't know what this function does either so it's not very important in my eyes anyway okay okay that's all discussed you can exit out of that and now open up player.qc and this is the last meet of the functions tutorial after this we're gonna move on to impulse commands and I'm gonna teach you how to use impulse commands then after that we're gonna go into animation frames so keep scrolling down scrolling down till you get to a function called player die and we're almost there player die right here this function player die okay so we're gonna go over this okay for starters you're spawning a local float eye remember you're just using a new float you're not spawning you're using 
a new float that's local to this function. <coughs> okay, this is subtracting your items. If you have any items, it's gonna take them away because you're you're dying. You don't need items. This is setting all your variables to zero, which honestly you don't really need to because it does that when you're spawning. It sets all these to zero when you're spawning. But you might want the effects off earlier. Just depends. Okay, this is setting. Okay, self dot model index. That is storing the index model that we set when you spawned in the game. So it's going to just set it to the player. Whatever other model index you're in, it's going to set it to the player index. Okay, this is saying if deathmatch or co-op, then you're going to drop a backpack. If you know in Quake, when somebody dro drops a backpack, it usually contains ammo. Okay, this right here is self.weapon model. When you die in Quake, you'll notice that you don't see your weapon anymore. That's because this right here is taking away the weapon. That right there, it's putting a null string in there. There's nothing in that string, so it's setting it to nothing. Then this right here, self.view offs. First of all, view offs, that's how, um, yeah, that's your camera right there. If you set any of these or change any of these, it's going to change your camera angle. So, negative 8 is setting the camera close to the ground. Self.dead flag equals dead dying. Remember, you're setting the dead flag for the code. Then you're not going to be solid, so people can walk through you and stuff. And it's taking your flags away. FL on ground, that means that you're on the ground. That's a flag for being on the ground. Self.move type equals move type toss. That means that um, you'll notice that the player bounces when he dies. And that is why, because it's setting it to a toss. I would just set it to, I don't know really actually, because if you set it to move type none, then when you die, you're gonna be just dead right there in the air. So that'll look kind of awkward. And this is checking your velocity for up and down, velocity Z, which Z is the up and down axis. It's saying if your velocity on the Z axis is less than 10, then your velocity for Z is going to add 300. It's going to be a randomized 300. All right? Next, this right here, let's just say you get hit by the rocket launcher, and the rocket launcher does a lot of damage. So if your health spikes down below 40, if self.health is less than negative 40, then you're going to gib. You're going to explode into the little blood and everything that Quake has. You're going to gib. That's if your health goes below 40. Then the death sound, this is calling a function which picks a, a sound randomly and it'll basically just pick a sound. And then it's going to set your angles. It's going to set them to zero. Then this is going to check if you have the the axe weapon and if you do it's going to play a special animation and then it's not going to it's not going to do with the rest of this code. It's just going to stop the code. That's what return does. We have the axe, it's going to play the axe animation, and it's going to stop the code. All this won't get called. If if not, then it's just going to skip all this. It's going to skip that check, and it's going to set that float that we declared, and it's going to set it to a CVAR. CVAR is a function which wants a string, and this is a little bit in the engine, I think. I think it's part of the engine. And this is going to say... If CVAR temp1, if it's not being used or pressed or whatever, then you're going to do this. You're going to do this. Which I equals 1 plus floor. And floor randomly picks a number out of 6. Right here, see? It's going to pick out of 6 random numbers. That's what floor does. So when you're making a floor function, you're going to do floor random times a number. And then right here, you can see that there's only four but you should need six so
So this this number should actually be five, or maybe even four. Ha actually, might even need it. No, it needs to be four. So basically, it's checking. It's basically checking all these. If i equals one, which remember all this is random, then it's just gonna pick each animation and play it. All right. So this about wraps up this tutorial. Remember, in the next tutorials, we are going to be going over impulse commands. In the next tutorial, we are. After impulse commands, I'm going to show you guys how I did my animations without using macros, which I think you guys will be way more accustomed to than using Quake's dumb macros. Alright, this is Max Cougar. Peace out.